So usually when I'm reading a dent, I've got my head kind of side onto the panel looking along the panel itself. But when you're working sharp damage or deep dents, it makes it quite tricky to see the center. So by repositioning yourself round, almost looking straight on at the dent, I think it makes it much easier being able to see that center point. So from this angle, the dent can look quite large and make it tricky to see the center. But by moving your body position around, looking at the dent almost square on, it makes it much easier to see the overall shape of the dent. And because this is a sharp dent, I'm only really trying to hit the center point. So the reason this helps me is as I'm trying to hit that center, it makes it clearer for me to see if I'm slightly off. So it's easier for me to tell if my tip is slightly to the left or the right, above or below. And from this angle, I can easily make those fine adjustments. Using tape over the end of your dent repair bars, this will allow for a much softer push and give you a bit more control. Particularly good in removing larger dents or just if you're training to give you that softer push to make sure you're not putting high spots in the panel or a risk of cracking the paint. So I will tear off a small section of the tape and just wrap it around the end of the dent repair bar. That will give a much softer or more resistance to give a much softer push. And of course you can add three or four or multiple layers on the tape just to give you that damper. One of the most important things to remember with paintless dent removal is to constantly check your angles. Now, whether you use a line reflector board like me, or a fog board or lights, uh, it's so important to keep jumping up, checking, your, um, checking the different positions and angles of the dent repair whilst you're repairing it. Uh, and 100% make sure you do that at the end as well. We can get so focused on taking a dent out and focused on that line reflection or whatever reflection you use, uh, that we can look at it and think that we've got that dent 100% out. But by just jumping up and checking it from top to bottom, left to right, really having a good look around at the different sides, we should be able to check that it's, it's completely out. Sometimes it can be a bit deceiving, look like it's fully out from one angle, um, looking this way, and then as soon as you jump up and check it from the other angle, you may see you've still got a slight high spot or a low or just a little bit of distortion in there. So remember to check and double check your angles when doing paintless and dent removal. Um, sometimes using these little nylon tap downs, it's easy to get a, a bit of a rough um, tip. Um, and because we put these directly onto the paint or the lacquer surface of a panel, um, you do run the risk of scratching the lacquer if you tap and then suddenly slip with the uh, tap down. So what I use is just a little bit of sandpaper. This is uh, 1200. And I just really, just very lightly make sure that I'm um, just taking that tip off. Um, sometimes you, they get a bit blunt as well, so you can just really keep them nice and sharp. But most importantly, just making sure it's a really smooth surface to not scratch the lacquer. It may sound obvious, but it's so often missed. And it's cleaning the panel that you're about to work on. Quite often you have a, a small dent and it might have a little scratch or a scuff on there, or it might just be dirty, covered in road film and dust. You can see the dent obviously, but once you put your line board up and think you've removed it, it's so much easier if you give that panel a quick polish or a quick wipe over, just to make sure you're getting rid of any imperfections in there, like the dust and film, that might make it harder to see the low spots or high spots in your panel. The benefit of doing this, especially with polish, if you've got a shinier panel to work on, it helps the reflection of the line board show up even clearer, so you have a brighter image to work against. If you're just starting to learn paintless dent removal, it's so easy to go straight in to try and to fix a dent. But my advice for beginners is to start with a completely clean section of panel, i.e. a bit of panel that doesn't have any damage to it at all. The reason for this is you can just start getting a feel for locating and finding the tip of your tool and just starting to understand the, the different amount of pressure you can apply to start to create movement in the metal. So whether you're using a line board, a fog board or um, any kind of reading device like lights, you set up on a panel um, without any damage on and just start moving that tool from the underside um, around forward and backward left and right and just start to identify how the metal responds as you're applying pressure and it's so much easier on a clean surface to start getting an, an idea and a feel for it before going straight into trying to learn how to identify the tip of the tool when you've already got distortion or a dent or, or kind of low spot on the panel. 
So very important to be able to identify if it's laminate glass fitted before you start doing your door repair. So I'm now taking an aerial view looking down at the top of the glass and hopefully you can see it is two panels bonded together. So just here that yellow line indicates the center point where those two separate panels are bonded. But to be honest the easiest thing to do is just have a look around the outer edge and here you can clearly see it's two separate pieces kind of bonded together so that's the quickest easiest way to identify if you're working on laminate windows now the laminate is very strong on the kind of center section but it can be very fragile and a lot more chance of kind of fracturing or shattering around the outer edge so you really have to be careful on your setup and exactly what part you are leveraging on so right now I've got a microfiber cloth just give me a little bit of a buffer between the window and the window guard but most importantly I do not have this window all the way down to the bottom so often if it's at the bottom as you start applying your wedge or putting a tool in you can fracture that upper section so I've got this one about three four inches up from that bottom section and that means by the time my window board goes in my wedge or my tool I'm not levering off the very edge of the the panel or the glass where it sits most fragile so I have found out the hard way and yes I have broken a couple of windows but both times it's because I didn't identify first that it was a laminate window so hopefully this video will help you at least know what to look for Using a standard hairdryer or a hot air gun on a low setting, we can warm up the panels that we're working on. In traditional methods with dent repair bars, this helps keep the, the paint supple, so it reduces the risk of the paint cracking. And with large dents, makes the metal more maneuverable to be able to work back into its correct shape. With glue pulling techniques, the warm panel helps the adhesive adhere to the panel which will give you a much better pull with the slide hammer once you've got your glue tab on the dent. So a cheap, handy bit of kit, and especially if you're working outdoors in the different temperatures, particularly if you're working out in the cold, a hairdryer or hot air gun just keeps that panel nice and warm, protecting the paintwork. This tool is one of the most commonly uh, shaped design tools for doing door dents and it's a like kind of a hockey stick shape with a handle on at an angle different to where the tip is. So typically we would use one of these tools to go down through the window recess behind the dent and then twist with this tip being behind the dent itself and slowly remove that dent. And with the handle being at an angle that's different to the, the tip of the tool, we can then get the right leverage on pushing those dents out. So we'll put it up against this door panel and give you a better idea as to what we're gonna do with this tool. So we'll use this door panel for an example. We would drop this window down and then with a window wedge, open up the recess between the door skin and the glass and put a window protector board up against the glass to protect from any kind of scratches as we will be levering off to repair dents. Once the board and the wedge are in place, we can then slot down our chosen dent repair tool and this will run down on the inside of the panel and assuming we have a dent roughly around here, We'll then be able to locate it, use our lined reflector board as a setup, and then gently, by twisting the handle, we have the leverage to push out the dent from the inside. So there are a variety of different lengths and shapes to allow you to get to different points around the door panel. When you get yourself in a position that you're looking at the dent, and you're getting to a level where it's smaller and smaller, so that you've almost taken out the dent, Get yourself a little bit closer and have a look at the angles, effectively giving your a zoom in so that you have a real close look at those high spots and low spots. This is often missed, but particularly if you're moving around the angles and checking it from the other side, don't be afraid to get really up close to the dent to make sure you can really see what you're doing. <laughs> 